President Bola Tinubu, Nigeria's chief marketer and his team, are wooing foreign investors to seize the investment opportunities in the country and bring their money to Nigeria. He has also called on Nigerians living abroad to come home and invest. However, Nigeria's weak fiscal monetary framework are scaring foreign investors from coming to Nigeria. I want to take a look at what the barriers are and the factors affecting the effectiveness of Nigeria's monetary and fiscal policies as our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. As the cost of livelihood increases and more pressure comes from various angles, there is a correspondent stress on the mental health of individuals. So today we'll be looking at coping with mental illness and understanding suicide prevention. We'll also be taking a look at the front pages of some national dailies. As we look at the headlines, our analysts will be joining us on Off the Press for that. Hello, good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menon Wezigwe. And I am Yamgul Agaji. Every weekend we just pray for the days to run so that we can get to Monday and reconnect with you because it is because of you that we are here as well. So we're hoping that you have a positive mindset. It's Mindset Monday and welcome to the breakfast. Yeah, we hope you woke up on the right side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the starting point. Because if you didn't wake up on the right side of the bed, mm -hmm. the rest of the day may just not be. But whichever side of the bed you woke up on, Mm. It's a new week. It's begun already. So just embrace it and make the most of it. Tell yourself that, look, this week I will achieve. This week will bless me. Mm. You see, the, the sun rose. No matter how dark the night was, the sun still rose. No matter how cloudy the morning might be, the sun is still there shining. So no matter how you woke up, like she said, whatever part of side of the bed you woke up from, be sure that the evening meets you smiling, meets you with a positive mindset, meets you uh, as a very, very joyous person. Because even in scripture, they say, even if you are angry, you shouldn't allow uh, the sun to go the down on your anger. Down. So no matter how you're feeling, if you're feeling negative, be sure that as at the time the sun will be going down, you will be so positive that the people, even your enemies will be like, wow, what's going on here? <laughs> you see. So, but it's a Monday. And it is the final Monday uh, for the month of September. Every time we get to September, they say we are in Mba months. And yeah, the Mba months are here. September to remember. So make every moment count. That's what uh, really matters this morning. Make every moment count. We have our top trending for you this morning. We have three, four of them. And we will begin with... All right, I'm waiting for it to be scrolled up. Okay, uh, we'll begin with the situation in, in, in one of the states where I'm talking about Delta State specifically, the Eku Baptist General Hospital Delta State. Uh, the MD, the team of doctors and the state government, among others, have been dragged to the Delta State High Court for professional negligence that allegedly led to the death of a 33-year-old woman, Mrs. Anesta Egede. In the right of summons, the Mr. Festus Gutson Egede, as Clement named Eku Baptist General Hospital Delta State Government and Dr. Totibo, among others, as defendants. The deceased husband, Gutson Egede, said that Dr. Ibom Totibo allegedly left cotton wool in his wife's abdomen after surgery, which led to her death, Mrs. Egede Anesta was allegedly having pain in her abdomen and went to Catholic Hospital Obiaruku, where she was admitted. And a scan of her abdomen was duly recommended by the hospital, which revealed she was suffering from appendicitis. According to Mr. Festus Gutson Egede, the hospital claimed the app appendicitis was not up to 7.6% and as such, not up to the level for her to need the minor appendicitis operation, and she was discharged from the Catholic hospital after two days of admission. Upon getting home, 
and the pain persisting, Mr. Festus Agade claimed to have taken the wife to Eku Baptist General Hospital for further examination of the already established appendicitis. A certain Dr. Adam Totibo, after having done another scan con on her and further physical examination on Mrs. Anesta Gede, allegedly opined that her appendicitis was due and directed the surgery to remove the appendicitis for the next day. Mr. Gede stated that after the surgery, his wife was wheeled to a private ward for close observation noting that instead of improving, she started to rapidly deter, you know, weaken. As her abdomen began to swell, and she could not gas or stool for over 14 days. After a recommended uh, MRI scan, which was conducted at Lilly Hospital, Benin City, Edo State, and the result analyzed as a plethora of specialists, by plethora of specialists, it was allegedly determined that Dr. Adam Totibo and his team left a huge cotton wool on Mrs. Anesta Gade's abdomen after the surgery. She died from that. Hey, it's really unfortunate. Um, the first hospital said it was not ripe enough. It was mm -hmm. not mature enough for them to do an operation. And I don't know if that is what happened here, but the experience I've had is Sometimes these um, private hospitals just make sure that you get a procedure that will bring more money. For instance, you're going to have a baby, even if it is a possibility that you can have it naturally, they'll tell you you need CS, whether you like it or not. You need CS. Sometimes even when you're not due, but you're just finding it uh, difficult, you're having some pain, they tell you you need CS because a normal bed maybe will cost less than uh, um, CS when they give you and you, you're paying hundreds of thousands. And then sometimes they diagnose you in ways that when you go to real hospitals, places that they will tell you the truth, you'll be surprised at the kind of things that they tell you. I don't know if, because, if it is because there's no regulation, I don't know, but in the medical field there should be so much regulation that everybody that, there should be a lot of sincerity so that anybody that goes to a hospital knows if it is cancer, you know it is cancer. If it is um, something else, you know it is something else. Yeah, but in this case it was the general hospital that said, the, you know, she needed to be operated on. What I'm alarmed about is the frequency you know, which we hear of doctors leaving cotton either scissors wool. What, what, what? or cotton wool or some metal inside a patient's body after operation. I, I don't get it. They are supposed to be a team surrounding the person during the operation. How come all the nurses, all the auxiliary nurses, the doctors themselves, you know, the surgeons... They just forget. They just forget that. I mean, how? I don't understand but again, the negligence. But again, there was a story a few days ago that a, a doctor died because he was on call for 72 straight hours. He was having a, a neurosurgery and all that. Yeah. So maybe, I'm not saying this is an excuse, but maybe uh, hospitals are so short-staffed that the ones that work there, all of them will be, will be so tired that I'm just making small excuses. But it should never happen that a hospital will have a doctor on call for, for 72 for hours. For more than even 24 hours. I Why heard that, that story. Be? I was alarmed. But again, the cases... I mean, a lot of things are really coming up now. Is it that they forget an equipment in the patient's body? Or they harvest the patient's organ? We, we heard yeah, of that, one that, that happened that, in Plateau State. That one State, is really scary. Then the one that happened in, in Lagos, Lagos State. And God knows other cases that have been undetected. Perhaps the person died without them knowing that indeed an organ was harvested at some point. Because uh, there's usually no autopsy, so nobody uh, thinks about what happens to the, to the patient. Now, um, the Senator Ned Nwoko was saying that uh, he was going to uh, sponsor, a, sponsor bill a bill that, that will make say it mandatory for autopsies yeah. to be done before someone is buried. Uh, Mobad's case yes. has uh, brought that to fore. Yes. Very unfortunate things happening to Nigerians and things that shouldn't really be. I mean, they were talking about, I remember some months ago, we were talking about how it is unfortunate that when people are rushed to hospital on an emergency cases, or on emergency cases, money is requested first before life is attended to, which shouldn't be. 
There was even a case where police had to take a patient to a hospital, and mm -hmm. about four hospitals rejected the patient. And if the police cannot bring a, a case to the hospital and, and it's attended to, so where, where are we even getting at? A lot needs to be done in Yamgo. Life must be made sacred because life is sacred. There's no duplicate for life. So whatever it is, this administration really does have a lot. It's got his work cut out for him. If they actually are determined to do this, and begin mm. to know what their duties are. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the governments do not even know what their duties are. And so they're left unattended to. So many things need to be done. The medical association, yes, they are calling for more attention to be given to that sector. But all hands must be on deck. When yeah. the government lives up to its expectations, the practitioners themselves should also live up to their own expectations. So that Nigerians are not left at the mercy of some very crooked People. One thing that is missing in, in, in Nigeria very greatly is monitoring. Mm. Some of these things that we're complaining about, that there's not much funding that uh, is going to eat and all that, if everything that goes into some of these sectors is monitored, mm. we will have better results than what we have now. You go to the education sector, there's no monitoring anymore. When we were growing up, schools inspectors were like some demigods. Mm -hmm. They will come all the time, and teachers know that they can come at any time. So their notes are, are up to date. The students are such that if a, 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 an inspector comes and asks a question in the class, the students will be ready to answer. So the teachers are teaching. Mm -hmm. They know that the scheme of work is being covered and all that. Nowadays, we don't see monitors anymore. We don't see um, inspectors of schools anymore. We don't have agri extension officers anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't have all these th people that used to be there to see how the people are doing. Farmers, how are you doing? Are there innovations? Agri extension officers will show you. Now they are no longer there. Teachers, are you doing well? The students, are you doing well? Schools inspectors are there. Now we don't see them anymore. And it, it cuts across all the sectors of our economy. All the and sectors, really even NAVDAC. Even NAVDAC. I remember when that issue of the Indomie came up. Mm. It took a long time before NAVDAC conducted their own tests and were told it's because they had to import what they were going to use to conduct the test. And I was thoroughly alarmed that NAVDA cannot conduct some necessary tests in this country mm. without having to take some time to import what they would use. And sometimes it doesn't come because uh, they cannot get these equipments, but they just don't want to get, I'm not talking about NASDAQ, NAVDAQ now, I'm talking about all uh, other sectors. They just don't want to import it because it will not give them the opportunity to go outside. And you know, there's money that comes from going outside and all that, so um, they will just neglect it. Even the people who have, let's say, they have conference rooms in their ministries, they still go outside to do their meetings. They do their conference, whatever they need a conference room for. They go to Didn't you big see hotels. The fact that our Ni uh, Nigerian governors had to go abroad for their summit. Entertainment their industry goes abroad to do award for artists of Nigeria. It doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know. I don't know the craze of going abroad. Nigeria that needs a reverse. Wants to do. We Nigeria need needs a rebirth. A lot, a lot has gone wrong. A lot. Has anyway, gone wrong. staying with health issues, um, the next story is about um, diphtheria. I know it is not. Um, it is not COVID, and the craze about it. The whole world may not be talking about it, but we are losing people. People are dying. At least ten people have reportedly died following an outbreak of 91 suspected cases of diphtheria across 14 local government areas in Jigawa State. That is just one state. The state minister of health confirmed this to a journalist during a press briefing in Dutsi on Sunday, and the permanent secretary in the ministry, Dr. Salisu Muazu, said. Uh, so far, two cases had been confirmed at Kazore and Jahun local government areas, while some samples have been taken to Abuja for confirmation. And you see, uh, during the COVID era, how many people died from that state? Now we're talking about 10 from something that is not even given that much attention. Uh, Moazu pointed out uh, that this um, outbreak was particularly concerning as it occurred in areas with a history of zero dose routine immunization against the epidemic. And according to him, the ministry swiftly initiated an investigation gathering essential information and data 
from the affected regions and promptly notified the National Primary Health Care Development Agency and the National Center for Disease Control, NCDC. They asked them to coordinate further actions, and according to him, the state government is actively preparing to administer vaccines as soon as they become available. Meanwhile, Permanent Secretary attributed the outbreak to the disruptions in healthcare services caused by COVID-19 pandemic, explaining that the suspension of routine immunization during the period posed a significant challenge. Now, COVID-19 will now be like the devil. You do anything bad, you blame it on the devil. Even if you're doing it with your clear <laughs> conscience, you blame it on the devil. Everything is now COVID-19. But the worrisome thing is that in the North, people are still not as welcoming to immunization routine as they should be, at least not as much as the South. There are some communities you go to, and they don't believe in immunization and all that. So I'm thinking where the problem is. Is it that the, 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 the clergy are not doing enough, or the government is not doing enough, uh, national orientation and all that? But a lot of these people, their beliefs come from a, a religious background. So is it time to train the clergy or to talk more to the clergy, or how does this orientation get to the grassroots so that they can accept this? It's not enough to even say it is because of the disruptions in COVID-19 pandemic. It has been an, a, a big problem in the North that a lot of times people reject immunization. And if things like this happen, how are they going to cope? They'll yeah, be people, prone to it. Oftentimes people reject immunization because of lack of trust and confidence mm -hmm. in these immunizations. There have been different stories. Um, some have been said to be conspiracy theories. Some have been said to be quite legitimate. Mm. So there have been concerns. I think one of the ways to get over this is for homegrown vaccines to be made available mm. to the people. Perhaps they would have more confidence that this is coming from our people. It will not do us harm because um, there is this concern and we cannot wish that away and people are entitled to their analysis of what you're going to be putting into their own bodies so they're entitled to whatever safety precautions they think is necessary for themselves or their words or their children so that is the issue we need to find alternative to um, the vaccines brought from abroad to our people but is that really their concern? Because the people who reject these vaccines, uh, sorry to say, but I don't think they're so educated to know the difference. Uh, so I place, as a person, I'm just placing the fault on the people who need to really educate them. Uh, because even if you're, they are homegrown, so long as it's an in injection and not a book, <laughs> let me use that, that one, a lot of people will reject it. So... Whoever is responsible for letting the people know the importance should do, do, do their work. I, I think that there's not enough education for them. Okay, also, in the North, mm -hmm. I hear stories. You lived in the North. I don't know. Um, maybe the stories are, are wrong. But sometimes some men, especially a lot of men, believe that if their wives need to go to hospital to give birth, they are not strong enough to be wife materials. So a lot of them prefer to stay at home, give birth. At, at least I was get, had, having the testimony from someone whose community believed this, that you are not strong enough. So you, you are not even strong enough if you, 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 you shout <laughs> when you're giving birth. You have to <laughs> swallow everything and show that you're a strong woman and just be maybe shaking your head and, until you have a baby. There are people who still need to be yeah, I, 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 even, I even saw a documentary in that direction. And yes, there are people with such mentality. I oh haven't dear. met anyone really, but there are people, or there have been people who have such mentalities, who believe that a woman should not... Um, you can't you know, scream. Exactly, nothing. and that if you give birth through a CS, or if, you're required, if you require CS to give birth, then you're not strong as your mates are. Those are daft thinking <laughs> but yes there, there have been such thoughts and there have been such people do they still exist i don't know i can't tell. trust me they do because the story is a recent story but <laughs> bottom line is people we cannot assume that people should know better until you tell them you have no right to say they should know 
there are a lot of people who still believe in things that are really weird. Mm -hmm. And unless the people, some of us who are privileged enough to read wide and to, to have some knowledge about these things, we are failing them if we do not educate them. Now, this is not just National Orientation Agency, which is dead anyway, uh, as far as I'm concerned. But everybody else who is privileged enough to know better should be able to impact that knowledge on the people who do not know. Sometimes they will trust you more than a government person coming to tell them mm -hmm. because you are part of them. What about those who know, who are actually the ones telling them these things? I mean, for selfish reasons. Maybe not for selfish reasons, maybe for selfish reasons. Because if you know and you're still saying the same thing, you're like a doctor who is divorcing your wife because she's giving you female children. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> so you know and you're still doing this. It's selfish. Okay, no let's, let, let's take this third top trending um, away from the picture on the screen. A two-story building has reportedly collapsed at Al Haji Mansuru Street, Ijagun, in Alimosho local government area of Lagos. In a video that went viral on Sunday, the building collapsed on a smaller structure. It is, however, unclear if there are any casualties due to the building collapse. Another building collapse. Another Always one in Lagos. bites the dust. It's almost like it's a, a daily occurrence in Lagos. Only the ones that made it make it to wow, the press look at that. are the this ones that we see. Yes, it's, My it's terrible. There's a possibility there will be at least one person in that place, but we have not found the out. whole thing. Just because the building in front is either Whoa. a shop or somewhere that someone is. Yeah, uh, some shanty. Uh, yeah, there oh must be people living in there. So this I do is hope. So so tragic. So unfortunate. People are cutting corners just to make money. Which is very sad. Very, very sad. The person who is building the house may not have the intention of living there. Uh, the person who has taken the contract may not even be thinking about the safety of people. It is in Lagos that I hear that blocks do not need to be strong because you are going to have pillars. So there are some blocks that you can use your hand and just scatter. You just, yeah, just break it. Yeah, a lot of the it. blocks, I'm telling you, a lot of the blocks are like that. And the, the kind of, I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes the buildings are not even meant to be more than a bungalow, you know. Yeah, the, the, do, the, you know, the roads that are being do. used, the roads that are being used mm -hmm. have specifications if mm -hmm. it has to be a story building or two-story building and all that. But they don't do that. They just use any iron. They, they're using it. It's the same way when they're doing a culvert. They just use any iron. And two months later, the culvert has collapsed. Mm -hmm. And then they're coming to fix it again every time, every time. And then, yeah, and if you look around, I mean, the houses, the modern buildings today, back in the days growing up, do, do you remember how difficult it used to be to hit a nail on the yes. wall, to take it through? It's so hard. We had what we call, and I think we still have them, concrete nails. Mm -hmm. You needed concrete nails to be able to nail anything to the wall. But today, just a little thing and the whole wall comes <laughs> off everything just it wasn't even a common thing to have hollow blocks anyway mm -hmm. they just had the blocks that had no holes in it. it was one sturdy thing and it was good enough but nowadays like you said the blocks you're hitting a hole in one and the whole wall comes crumbling just down comes because it's, crumbling it's, like it's terrible. Flakes all it's around terrible. Monitoring should be done. Lagos State Government, be deliberate about this. The amount of buildings collapsing in Lagos is too much. Lagos is the smallest or one of the smallest states housing 10% of the population of, uh, of Nigeria. And so everything has to be deliberate. The eyes of government cannot be anywhere, everywhere, but there are collaborations that can be made. And there are societies concerned with the building. We don't know how much collaboration has been done with those uh, people. But these incidences of building collapsing every day must stop. Has to stop. They have to stop. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for us to take a little break and come back and give you up the press. Stay with us.